Hey guys, welcome to another Logic Pro X tips and tricks video. And in this, I just want to introduce you to the um, interaction between the arrangement marker track and the drummer tracks. And then you can go and learn more about it with the full in-depth tutorials about the drummer tracks um, on our channel. Okay, so here we've got a, an empty project. There's one instrument track there created just doing nothing. Um, and if we drop down this global tracks area, at the top you should see the arrangement marker track. Okay, if you don't see it, you just bring up the shortcut menu for the global tracks area by right clicking anywhere in this grey background area. Or if, like me, your right click is assigned to your toolbox, then to bring up shortcut menus, you control left click. So I control left click or, or right click in this area, and you just tick arrangement here, and then you'll see the arrangement marker track. Now, with this arrangement marker track, when you click the plus button, it creates an arrangement marker. And they're always eight bars long by default. They could be made shorter. Now we've got a four bar marker, or they can be dragged to be longer. Now we've got a 16 bar long marker. Okay. So you can build the structure of your song using these markers, and each marker can be titled intro, verse, chorus, bridge, or outro. We can also custom rename them, but that's um, something else. I'm, when we're talking about the interaction between the drummer and the arrangement marker track, it, it's about how the drummer interacts with these preset arrangement markers, intro, verse, chorus, bridge, and outro. So let's build a, a very basic song structure using the markers. Okay, so I start, I create a marker, I title it intro, and I'll make my intro four bars long. Then I'll make a verse marker, eight bars. Then into the chorus, eight bars. Then out of the chorus, back into second verse, eight bars. Then we go into the second chorus, eight bars. Then we come out of that into the bridge, eight bars of bridge, then back into eight bars of verse, and then finally into the last eight bar chorus, and then eight bars of outro. Now in terms of how logic treats these markers, the verse is like your basic beat. The chorus is a busier version of the verse beat. And in the chorus, the drummer usually will play more kicks, uh, more little offbeat snare licks. The drummer might switch from the hi-hat to the ride or increase the tempo of the, um, uh, not the tempo, in increase the amount of hits being played on the hi-hat, etc. So the chorus is a busier version of the verse beat. An intro is a cut down beat. A bridge beat is similar to a verse, but different. And an outro beat is similar to a chorus beat, but a little bit more busy and developed or with some other little offbeat a pattern that's happening in there on a snare or something, right? It's a variation on a chorus beat. So you build the structure of your song with these markers. And then when you create your drummer track, drummer track in any genre, the drummer track creates all the drumming regions following the arrangement markers. So below the intro marker, the drummer will play intro drumming. Below the verse marker, the drummer plays verse drumming. Below the chorus marker, the drummer plays chorus drumming. Below the bridge marker, the drummer plays bridge drumming. And below any outro marker, the, the drummer plays outro drumming. And the whole drum track is put there following the markers with fills leading from one section into the next, etc. And there's a complete ready to go drum track. You can change the drummer to any drummer and it just updates all the drumming, but it still is, whichever drummer you've chosen, it's still that drummer playing the intro, the verse, the chorus, the bridge, etc. Just updates all the drumming to that new drummer's drumming but retains the correct drumming for each section of the song you can change genre let's change it to electronic and it just updates the drummer again new drummer track installed in a different genre but intro is intro drumming chorus is chorus drumming verse is verse drumming bridge is bridge drumming outro is outro drumming etc yeah. it's very clever let's go back to rock Kyle, the default drummer. Now this is all Kyle's drumming. So this is Kyle playing the intro. Kyle playing the verse. And there are fills from each section into the next. This is Kyle playing the chorus. Kyle playing the bridge. And Kyle playing the outro, etc. And once you've got the whole thing in there, you know, the drums following all the markers, if you just highlight all the drums, you can then say to um, 
the drumming track with all the sections highlighted. You can say, well, I like this drumming. There's the Carl's drumming. He's playing intro there, verse there, chorus there, bridge there, etc. But with everything selected, I'm now going to make Carl play quieter. And this is still the same drummer. It's still the intro, verse, bridge, etc. drumming. But we just dragged everything down in loudness. So it's a quieter drum track now. Or we can push it to be much louder drumming. We can make the drumming less busy. This is with all the regions selected. Moving it this way makes all of those regions play less busy. But still, intro is intro, verses, verse, choruses, chorus, etc. Or less busy and quieter, etc. All right, so <coughs> you know, there's extra things you can do. So that's that interaction between the arrangement markers and the drummer tracks. And if you want to learn about that in depth, uh, look on our channel. There's a full in-depth tutorial about drummer tracks, how to use this drummer editor, and all about the drum kit designer, um, how it works, using separate outs, etc., etc. Okay, so I hope that's useful. If you want more in-depth on that, go and check out the full in-depth tutorials on the drummer tracks and the drum kit designer on our channel. There's also a full in-depth tutorial on the drum machine designer as well, including how to make your own custom sounds um, and for the drum kit uh, drum machine designer and save them in the library, how to make synthesized sounds or sample-based sounds, etc. Et okay, I hope that's useful.